demonic pistol is one of the more cheaper weapons you can craft via blueprints. It is pretty common and no doubt you've come across throughout your entire run. The gun itself is mediocre at best, with a 7 ammo capacity and high headshot damage. It doesn't have like the best DPS, but you can still put up a decent fight against early waves. The one major issue with it though, is that it has a low ammo capacity, making you have to reload every now and then. And when the enemies are pushing in, one second can cost the entire run. Honestly, a waste of scrap to craft this weapon. You can find other small weapons that can significantly do better than this. The only first sight it has is it acts as a silencer, being able to kill enemies while alerting others. rifle is a dull sniper at best. It works as a sniper but there's not really much to say about this gun really. Mediocre but not too bland. Only good thing is that if you get fracture, you can hip fire with this thing and it still hits. Overall, probably just craft this gun for more long ammo for the better sniper I guess. Next up on the list is another cheap blueprint you encounter a lot and that is the High Kappa blueprint. Unlike its little brother modded pistol, the High Kappa is one of the now more top tier weapons weapon. in the game. And why you may ask? Although it may cost around the same as a modded pistol, it comes in with a whopping 20 light ammo, making it more efficient in killing groups of enemies. But its major pro comes from its DPS. Being a modified airsoft toy, this thing can rank up to 420 damage in just seconds, assuming you're hitting headshots. And out of all the light ammo guns in the game, I recommend I say go for the high kappa every time, because it can demolish enemies quickly and conserve your animation more. Overall, this thing is a complete monster on its own and have no rights to be this cheap to obtain. Coming up next to our list is the R11 RSASS. Now, after those two aforementioned pistols, things are gonna get a bit more expensive as the guns I'm going to mention now will cost around 100 scrap. Overall, the RSASS is a solid firearm. It has good damage and good recoil, and it isn't as crazy or, or lame. It also has a scope giving you the ability to target enemy from further away. It also has decent ammo capacity with 20 heavy ammo. If you want to make more heavy ammo, then this is the gun to go. Combined with Paranoid Trait, this gun can do a good amount of damage to enemies. Not bad and can be viable. The HM9 is a burst weapon, meaning you can't really control the amount of bullets you're going to shoot and will always waste 3. It's a mediocre gun, being a complete waste of short ammo when used on normal enemies, so this gun is not suitable for waves or looting. However, it has one of the highest DPS in the entire game, being able to completely silence Slash Queen 
or a circular within seconds. Always remember to bring two of these. Overall, very situational gun can be fun when used correctly, and I recommend perks like Tick Spider or Resonor for the no recall. Moving on to the meta, we have the Caltech KSG. I say this is one of the actual good shotgun in the game, top tier gun with a high ammo capacity, and with tight spread you can technically snipe with this gun. Can one shot the majority of enemies and overall can be relied on, and it's great when combined with traits like reliable and paranoid. Just make sure you don't reload when it's at zero bullets because without the reliable traits or artillerist perk, You'll be reloading for at least 10 seconds, though you can avoid this by reloading constantly or press H to fix your arm. Overall great gun, there's not much to say about this. Last on the gun list, we have the Meta, the Alpha, and the Omega modded AKM. It goes without saying that this is the go-to firearm blueprint if you want to craft. Top tier gun with a high ammo capacity of 30 rounds. It has high damage, being able to eliminate most enemies with just 2 shots, and can work in any given situation. Very powerful and overall good gun. I recommend going professional with this gun and the modded AKM can also be used with any given perk. The first weapon we're going to talk about in the melee category is the Maria. So far this is the only melee weapon in the game that can actually apply the Cripple debuff to enemies. Do correct me if I'm wrong though. Not only that, it also applies Fracture to them, which will make them do less damage with melee and reduce their accuracy with guns, while also making them take damage over time by bleeding. Overall, it's a good melee, works well with Berserker or any perks really. Next up on the list is the Executioner Sword. This and the Mara are actually more uncommon depends on your RNG, as they are one of the harder weapons to obtain. Anyways, the Executioner Sword is really only good with heavy attacks compared to its light attack. Being able to completely behead any scab that is below 120 HP. Usually great for waves and also looting. The gimmick here is that each kill you get with the Executioner regardless of heavy or light attacks, you're going to heal 5 HP. Now this may not sound much but if timed correctly, you can basically heal up to 40 HP from Night Tree layer on. Convenient and strong, it also has a set 
swing speed so traits like manic won't affect it at all. Works well with perks like Zedar since the perk has decreased heavy swing speed. Moving on, we have the Bill Hook, or you can call it the Artistan Hook. It has 200% range, meaning you can hit your enemy from further away without taking damage. Overall, decent damage. Its unique ability is to stun enemies on hit, so you don't really have to parry them. But this can also lead to some problems. First being, the enemies in this game is very notorious for being annoying, especially scav with firearms. When they first spot you, they'll usually have 100% accuracy, and by stunning them, you're resetting their AI, essentially making them unnotice you. And when they get back up unaware, they'll spot you and have perfect aim. Another thing to consider is that without pairing, you won't be able to recover the stamina, so make sure to not rely on this ability too much. Perks like Berserker will kind of suffer as you cannot parry to refill your bar, while the perk like Executioner benefits by dealing more damage while not losing much of percentage at all. Up next we have the Fire Axe. It is a chip melee you can craft from a blueprint, but this chip monster is not to be underestimated. With 24 damage light swing, you can rank up to 96 damage in a full combo. Not to mention it also has fast light swing speed, making it so that you can do this much damage in just a second. And being an axe, it also inflicts fracture on enemies making them deal less melee damage and less accurate with aiming. Overall, this is a very fine melee. Works about just any situation. Um, any perks can go really well, but I recommend Executioner or Immolator. Next up we have on our list is the Decimator. This is what a shotgun and a hammer combination looks like. As the name suggests, this thing decimates whatever in its path, mostly. Being the only melee in the game that can do actual AoE damage, this results in very great crowd control, being able to explode up to as many enemies as it wants. The only downside is that if you use the heavy attack on regular scarf in the looting phase, you'll end up exploding them and the rations in the process. So best use light attack instead. And this weapon pairs extremely well with the perk Lazarus. Now, coming to the last one we have on our list is the Milbo. 
and as a bow, you have perfect accuracy when standing still, which can be very good for perks that don't have increased recall or cannot aim down sight like Apostle, Dam, etc. Unlike other firearms, to refill your bow, all you need is 5 strap and a stick, so you don't have to worry about wasting too much ammunition with this thing. And with FPS and Locker, you can reload this bow quicker, essentially turning it into like a better pistol. Overall solid weapon and pairs well with the emulator buff.